You don't have to try to time the market of trying to shift all of your funds into one piece of the pie, owning that entire pie, all the different pieces right over that long period of time is what helps you get through the volatility if there is any right when it comes to inflation. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Money podcast with Scott Searens, teaching you how to thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. Welcome back to the Your Life, Your Money podcast, where we discuss thoughts, strategies, and actions to help you thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. I'm your host, Scott Searens, also president and financial advisor at Searens Financial Group. And in today's show, we're going to talk about inflation. There's a lot of headlines out there. And I always tell clients, the headlines are to grab your attention so the news company can advertise to you. But I get it, right? Those headlines make us wonder. Sometimes it makes people worry, brings our attention to things to say, hey, how could this or how might this potentially impact my financial future? So today we're going to talk about inflation. We're going to talk about what is inflation. I want to go over some examples talk about some of the positive sides of inflation, some of the negative sides of inflation. And then I think what is maybe really on your mind is what does or how does inflation impact your investment portfolio? And what's, if any, is there any sort of correlation between inflation and investing and the stock market? Now, Before we dive in, if you haven't yet checked out, check out our webpage, lifemoneyshow.com. Again, lifemoneyshow.com, as there are lots of blogs, videos, and other podcasts to help you thrive in life, wealth, and retirement, as well as subscribe on your favorite podcast player. All right, so let's dive in. What is inflation? Well, Inflation is the impact of rising prices on the economy. There's another definition here that says the rate at which the value of a currency is falling and consequently the general level of prices for goods and services is rising. So if you look at kind of both of those definitions there, what does it talk about? It talks about the rising prices for goods and services in the economy. And then the, the thoughts, I guess, out there, kind of the articles you're seeing, right? All the different headlines about inflation is then how is that going to impact our economy? And we'll talk about some of those pros and cons of, of inflation in a little bit. Inflation itself is measured maybe in a few different ways, but the the most common measurement of inflation is the consumer price index. And uh, this is uh, the value, I guess, is put out by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And so I was looking at at um, at a article by Investopedia, and I'll link to this in the show notes. But basically, it was talking about how uh, the consumer price index is up 5.4% for the 12 month period ending July, 2021. So basically looking at July, 2021, looking back 12 months and they're saying, hey, this consumer price index is up 5.4%. Now, again, I'll link to this article in the show notes and you're wondering, well, what does that mean? How does that compare? Where are we at? And you'll see kind of over the last few years, the range has been anywhere as low as 0.1% and then sometimes hitting you know in the 2 or or 3% range so the 5.4% report was definitely a spike on the chart and we'll link to that article in the show notes so that way you can kind of see the chart over time but what does that mean well i, I guess in general that means that prices are going up and so the same $1 bill that you had, you know, in July of 2020, now would buy fewer goods in July of 2021. And why this maybe sometimes becomes a, a concern of people is because they would call that, right, where the same $1 bill buys less, they would call that a loss of purchasing power by the common public, which 
could potentially lead to deceleration, right? So if we have a loss in purchasing power, it could potentially lead to deceleration in economic growth. And this is where, and we're not going to get really in depth on this, but this is where the central banks become involved to help continue to try to manage the inflation and the supply of money. So let's just think about this for a second. Let me just walk through some examples of inflation, right? So let's say the price of oil goes up. Well, if the price of oil goes up, oil you know, creates a lot of fuel that runs our different manufacturing facilities. It also could mean that it's going to cost more to ship goods, whether that be on a boat, on a plane, on a train, or just in a truck down the road. Uh, for all of us, it means that it could cost more for us to, to travel. Um, it could cost more for us to drive to work. It could cost more for us to drive to the store. So all of that, right, kind of helps you understand how just even one thing, like the price of oil going up, can raise prices across the board. And if, if the cost to manufacture the goods go up, if the cost to ship the goods go up, well, then the cost of the good that you're purchasing on the shelf at the store will probably rise as well as that company has a, a profitability rate that they're trying to manage and obtain. And so if you were to go into the grocery store today and fill your cart grocery cart with the same items that you would have filled your grocery cart with a year ago, most likely that grocery cart today is going to cost you more than what it would have cost you a year ago. And so that kind of leads into, you know, kind of what are some of the, the negative sides of inflation? Well, right there, right? The price of goods um, are rising and that same dollar that you would have had a year ago is um, able to buy fewer goods today. So that same grocery cart, right, today is going to cost you more dollars than it would have cost you a year ago. A few other downsides to inflation. So as we're talking, right, price of goods going up, if you're somebody that is holding on to a lot of cash or bonds, right, it erodes away, as you can see now, it erodes away the purchasing power of holding on to too much cash, especially since interest rates are low. And then rising prices can also make it a lot harder. Another downside to inflation is that rising prices can also make it harder for some people to save for their retirement, right? So if you're trying to maintain, right? And so the same goods and services that you need to maintain your life, if the cost of those goods and services continues to rise, and let's say that your company paycheck is the same, well, it's going to take you more money now to pay for those goods and services, and it'll leave you less than to potentially save for your retirement. So that's where you have to start to look and, and try to make those trade-offs of, of what is you know, actually important in regards to your life and in maintaining your life, and how much do you need to continue to save to maintain for, for your retirement. Now, there are some positive views um, on what inflation brings as well. One of the positive sides of inflation is tangible assets like property. A lot of times can see a rise in their value. And then the other thing is with, right, with the ability right, to raise prices in the stores for goods that we're paying for, and also with the current shortage in the labor market, we are seeing an increase in wages from a lot of different companies. So while there's pros and cons to inflation, a lot of the questions that I get is, you know, what should you be doing with your money to help keep up with this increase in the price of goods and services? But what does this mean for the stock market? Should you be worried about the stock market? Could this potentially mean a stock market crash? Could this mean a, that we're going to continue to see a, a bull market? What does this mean and, and where should you put your money? So let's talk about how to hedge inflation. I mean, as we just talked, price of goods and services going up, what does that mean? It means that we need growth on our money, growth on our savings. Now, 
interest rates are very low. So having too much in cash, having too much on the safer side of your portfolio in bonds could mean low returns and that your money, right, in those particular investments may not um, keep up with the rise in the price of goods. However, then you see a lot of different headlines and news articles out there, and it may spook you to say, well, what's going to happen with the stock market because of inflation? Now, I'm going to link to an article in the show notes here. There's a really good blog article on the, it's the blog called A Wealth of Common Sense. And as you go through the article there, you're going to see some different charts and they provided a really good chart that shows there's really no pattern between inflation and market returns. And this is where I'm going to continue to go back to, you know, what we've been talking about on all of the different shows and how we help clients in regards to building their long-term portfolios. And that's a key word here, long-term portfolio. You see, one, there's no pattern, right? The, the, as you'll see in that, that uh, blog article, it appears that there's no pattern between inflation and market returns. Now, the other side is, is that, you know, some professionals might say, well, uh, value stocks perform really well um, during inflation over growth stocks. Well, here's where it comes back to, do you feel like you're able to time the market? Meaning, if you believe that value stocks outperform the, the, the growth stocks, um, when should you then get into the value stocks? Has inflation already started? So are you too late into jumping into the value stocks? And then you have to ask yourself another question. When do you get out, right? When is, is inflation, you know, maybe maintained? And then now you need to, to jump out of those value stocks. Again, if you believe that value outperforms growth. So and then the other thing we have to understand that we've seen, right, is the past is not no indication of what future results will be in the market. And that's why I continue to go back to that long-term focus with a diversified portfolio, meaning that you've got a portion of your portfolio in growth opportunity stocks. You've got a portion of your portfolio in the value stocks. You've got a portion of your portfolio in mid cap growth in mid cap value you've got a portion of your portfolio in international growth and international value having that diversification owning a piece of each part of the pie right is what helps you from a long term perspective go through these different periods like inflation you don't have to try to time the market of trying to shift all of your funds into one piece of the pie, owning that entire pie, all the different pieces, right, over that long period of time is what helps you get through the volatility, if there is any, right, when it comes to inflation. Now, one of the things that I'll continue to hound on and in these uh, podcasts and in, in our discussions, right, is the other thing that we look at. We're always looking at your income plan, understanding what are your needs, supplemental income needs, cash needs over the next, let's say, three to five years. Why do I say three to five years? Well, if you look at some of the longer term recessions, right, they've taken maybe three to five years before the market has bounced back. So let's take a look at some of your supplemental income needs over the next three to five years. And we're going to continue to make sure that that's carved off onto the safer side of your portfolio. I get it. Bond returns are low. Interest rates are low. You know, the return on, you know, in this say in a savings account is low, but it's that, you know, you need, if you're going to need that money, we know that it's there. It's on the safer side, so it's there when you need it, and it's not subject to any potential volatility on the growth side of your portfolio, the equity side of your portfolio. Again, I'm not saying that there's going to be volatility, but if there is, you are prepared. So having that good balance between the safer side of your portfolio and the growth side helps you kind of 
ignore all of these different articles that are out there, statements that are out there, wonders that are out there, having that diversified portfolio helps get you through times like these where the unknown. Unknowns can sometimes cause that volatility in the market or the ups and downs that you see um, from a portfolio standpoint or from a, a stock standpoint. So hopefully that helps you take a look at things from an investing standpoint. Rather than get caught up in the articles, rather than get caught up in the news headlines, rather than get caught up in these different thoughts of trying to maybe time the market and totally shift around your portfolio because you heard that inflation is here and inflation is on the rise, it's taking a longer term thought process, longer term perspective, marrying up your portfolio with your income plan to have a long term investment plan, long term thought process. So that way you've got income to supplement your needs today and growth to help build the value of your dollar for the future. I really hope that you found this podcast to be of value and benefit. And if so, check us out on lifemoneyshow.com. That's lifemoneyshow.com. Also, subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast player. And we'll continue to come out with new episodes to help you and your financial future. I look forward to our next conversation to help you continue to live life today and be financially confident about your tomorrow. Siren's Financial Group is an independent financial services firm that utilizes a variety of investment and insurance products. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC. AE Wealth Management and Siren's Financial Group, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Siren's Financial Group, Inc. is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Siren's Financial Group, Inc.